Hey carnivores, today we're doing Wagyu beef ribs. These are dinosaur ribs that would make Fred Flintstone proud. Yabba dabba do, stick around. Hey carnivores, so I'm really excited. These are, of all of the things that I cook, my absolute favorite to put out on the smoker. If you've been here before, you might have seen my Asado beef ribs video from a couple of months ago. It was a unique way of making them. I'm gonna do a different way today. It's gonna be a flavor bomb. But these are, like look at this marbling. Like these are the most incredible pieces of meat that you can cook. These are from Snake River Farms. Uh, that's my absolute favorite place to get uh, beef ribs. And I'll put a link in the description in case you already don't already do business with them. But let's go ahead and dive in and uh, look at what we got here. These are 17 pounds of beef ribs between them. They are plate ribs, which means they're ribs six, seven, and eight uh, along the cow, right adjacent to the chuck, same part as the chuck. The marbling is gonna be the same or more intense than ribeye cap uh, marbling. And you can see here along the side, just the level of marbling that we've got in these ribs. Uh, and the trimming's actually relatively easy compared to a lot of other cuts. There's a little bit of fat on top we're gonna take off only because there's silver skin under this fat. We wanna get rid of that, but then the rest of this is gonna be all about the smoker. So let me go ahead and get started uh, trimming up the first rib. Okay, let's look at what we got here. So I took all the fat off that had silver skin as part of it. There's still some pillowy fat here that, uh, that I left from where I took silver skin off on top of it. And the marbling on this, oh my God. So uh, l listen guys, this is what you're looking for when you're looking for beef marbling. Like this is gonna turn out incredible. All of this stuff is gonna render as we cook. So let's take a look at the rest of the rib. So on the back, uh, there's a membrane just like there is on pork ribs, but we don't take the membrane off because we want these to stick together. We're gonna cook these all the way through like we would cook a brisket. There's a little bit of fat left on here, so I'll go ahead and take this off. And the reason I'm taking this fat off, by the way, is because I'm gonna save it. If you haven't already seen the Wagyu tallow video about how I make tallow at home, all this stuff's gonna go into the tallow. I'll take some of the meat off, but the solids and the silver skin that are in here are just gonna end up as solids in the tallow. The fat will still separate. This is gonna be incredible. So this rib is about ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and trim up the other one. You don't need to watch that, but I'll be right back. Okay, you remember when I told you a minute ago that this is what you're looking for in marbling? I lied. Look at this. I think maybe Snake River Farms messed up and sent me a Japanese A5 Wagyu beef rib. This is so well marbled. This is, I've never seen anything like this that's not off of a Japanese cow. So uh, look, if you haven't tried these from Snake River Farms, obviously quality level is something crazy. So let's go ahead and get these on racks and get them seasoned. So the first step, if you've been here before you know, is we're gonna salt our meat. We always salt the meat separately from the other spices because we wanna control the amount of salt and we want the salt to be up against the meat. This is gonna pull any moisture out, any excess moisture, and uh, the salt's gonna get pulled into the meat. And we don't have to do the backside. Remember, we left the membrane there so the salt wouldn't penetrate anyway. All right, let's move these to the side and we'll make the rest of our rub. Okay, for our rub today, we're gonna do something uh, relatively simple. We've already got salt on the ribs. I'm just gonna do four ingredients, but they're gonna be quite the flavor bomb. So I'm doing two parts uh, ground black pepper, one part granulated garlic, one part celery seeds, and we're gonna to top it off with just a little bit of shiitake mushroom powder. There we go. Ah, so we made a little mess on the table. Then we'll use our uh, high-tech spice mixing device here. And uh, let's get this on the ribs. Okay, so we're gonna get this rub really generously on these ribs because these are monster pieces of meat. They can take it, they can take the heat we're gonna give them, and they can take the spices. So go ahead and get really heavy in the way that you season. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm just gonna pat those spices down. We're gonna let these breathe and come the rest of the way up to room temperature while we go and light the smoker. I'll meet you at the grill. Hey, welcome back to the backyard. If you've been here before, you recognize Darth, the extra large big green egg over my left shoulder here. Uh, Darth is running at 300 degrees, burning Fogo Super Premium Hardwood Charcoal. That's one of my favorites for long, low and slow cooks. Uh, and I've got some chunks in there of cherry and pecan. I chose cherry because of the impact it has on beef and pecan because the best beef ribs that I've ever had that I didn't make were at the Pecan Lodge in Dallas, Texas. So a little homage to the Pecan Lodge. So so here are our ribs. I've got uh, the first one that you saw me trim over here, and this is the one that looked like A5 Wagyu. We're gonna throw these on the grill. Now I've also got a couple of temperature probes here that plug into the thermal work signals, which I use to control the pit temperature and also track the cook. Uh, if you don't know about those, I've got a video uh, that I did about them. I'll put that up here. Uh, and I'm gonna put these temperature probes right into the thickest part of the meat. Now. Here's the program. I'm gonna open up Darth. I'm gonna put a water tray in. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in, a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Uh, if you're wondering whether I go through a lot of apple cider vinegar with my barbecue, this, this shit, did you guys even know that this comes by the gallon? Um, so I'm gonna put water, apple cider vinegar in. I'm gonna put these on and we're gonna let these smoke for a couple hours without touching them. The water and apple cider vinegar are gonna keep it nice and moist. And then we're gonna come back and spritz with the same combination of water and apple cider vinegar. Uh, so let's uh, get these on the grill and then I'll be back in two hours, uh, my time, but it'll be just a couple of seconds for you. I don't know what you guys thought, but I thought those looked incredible. Now, they're gonna be cooking for a while. This could be a six hour cook. It could be an eight or nine hour cook. Every piece of meat is different, but I'm gonna be back here spritzing every hour while it develops and while we cook. Now, we're gonna take these probably to 206, 208, maybe even 210 degrees. You know, we're cooking for tenderness, so I'm gonna probe it, and when it probes tender, then I know it's gonna be done. Now, before I go, uh, some of you might be wondering why am I cooking two giant racks of ribs when it's just me and Leah and Mrs. Eat More Vegans? Well, the answer is I'm going to a party and uh, it's a guy's night party and it's still COVID time so it's socially distant by the way, but I'm going to be bringing those, but I'm also bringing this. I've got, uh, I've got this mask here that is uh, an A5 Wagyu beef mask. So, uh, so look, hey look guys. I'm a steak, get it? All right, you guys get to watch me spritz until it's ready and then I'll see you back in the kitchen when it's time for me to slice those and oh my God, to taste them. See you in a bit. Okay, six hours and we're done. We've got the first one that I trimmed that looked amazing and then the one that looked like A5 Wagyu and they're both done at right about the same time, just a little bit over six hours. So I'm gonna wrap them in foil, then wrap them in a towel, we're gonna put them in the cooler and we're gonna let them rest for an hour. And then I'll see you back in the kitchen where we'll get to taste. <laughs>
Welcome back to the kitchen. If you've been here before, you recognize Leah. Leah's my nine-year-old, for those of you who are new, and she is quite the food critic, and she, uh, I think she likes most of what I cook, right? But uh, we'll see how she feels about these. Now, Leah, I made beef ribs. I made two plates of beef ribs on Darth. Um, and you've had these before. You remember those Argentinian asado beef ribs we made with the chimichurri? Yeah, I really like those. Yeah, those were good, right? So I did these same ribs, did them a different style, kind of a more traditional smoked style. And they look, they ended up being different. They're both from Snake River Farms. But this one here was the first one that I trimmed and it just looked amazing. And I told them, hey guys, this is what it's supposed to look like. And then I trimmed this other one and it looked like Japanese A5 Wagyu. It was so well marbled and I came back and I went, sorry guys, I lied. This is what it's supposed to look like. It's even better, right? So we should taste these and see if we can tell the difference and tell them what we think, all right? So, uh, you wanna pick a piece? Yeah, I'll take for myself, I'll take this piece. Okay, that one goes right I'll there. You this piece. Oh, and you're gonna pick mine? Okay, are you ready? All right, first piece, ready? Cheers, cheers. <laughs> That's pretty crazy, right? Real quick, MTY, moist. I mean, it's running down my chin, right? Tender, yeah? All right, yummy, how'd I do on yummy? Okay, all right, let's taste this other one. You wanna pick three pieces again? Pick them quick. I get them, look at that, I get a monster piece. All right, that one's for you guys. Okay, you ready? Cheers, cheers. <laughs> I didn't know it was possible, but this one's more tender. Yeah. Way more tender. Here, I'm gonna hold this up to the camera here. I don't know if you guys can see how juicy this is and how it's just coming apart in my fingers. Yes. This is crazy good. All right, so hope the Snake River Farm sends you that one, but if they send you this one, it's still pretty darn amazing. Don't you think, Leo? All right, listen, I hope you try the way that I did this. I think you're really gonna like this. If you haven't seen that Asado Beef Ribs from Argentina video, I'm gonna put it right here. And if you've seen that one, I also did the same kind of umami bomb experiment with a brisket, and I'll put that one uh, right down here. I hope you had fun. We'll see you next time on Eat More Vegans. Vegans.